Hello guys, welcome to this video. In this one we're going to see the different kind of grasshopper objects and the color system it uses to represent a component state. So let's go ahead and take a look at them. Basically grasshopper is made out of three things. If you manage to keep this in mind, you'll come to realize that grasshopper is actually a very simple software to understand. These are the three main types of components we have in grasshopper. The first one would be the parameters, which you could think of them as the variables in a programming language. These ones are used to store the different types of variables you can work within Grasshopper. The next one would be the components, which could be understood as functions, meaning they perform different operations. They are composed of a series of inputs which are computed to return an output. And finally we have the connections, which in the analogies we are making could be understood as the flow. So the connections are the links between parameters and components and dictate the logic and relationships throughout the algorithm. Another important aspect of Grasshopper is that you always work from a left to right logic, which means that your parameters and components will always receive their information from the left side and return their outputs on the right side. This will make that your algorithms or definitions always grow to the right side of your canvas. Grasshopper also uses a color system to indicate the current state of a component. For example, components with a gray color indicate that our component has already the information it needs to work and that we can work with it. Components also have the ability of being previewed or not on the Rhino viewport, so when a component appears in a dark gray color, it means that the geometry or data that it is contained inside that component is hidden and that it won't be showing on our viewport. And whenever we select a component with our mouse, this will always appear in a green color. You can also enable or disable components in Grasshopper. A soft gray color indicates that our component is disabled. So instead of just hiding the information from the viewport, you actually switch off the component so it stops sending or receiving information. The orange color is the default state of every component when you drag it into the canvas. This color means that our component does not have anything referenced into it or that it's still missing something to be able to work. And finally, when you see a red color on a component, it means that there is something wrong with it. Most of the times it means that one of the inputs it's receiving, it's not of the correct type. So now let's go into Rhino to review all this information. Let's start with our parameter objects. So I'm gonna go to my parameters tab and then select one of the items that I have here and drag it into my viewport. So now we have our parameter inside our definition. And as you can see, this is a very simple box which doesn't have any inputs or outputs indicators, which means that its only function is to store information, which in this case would be points as this is a point parameter. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is to go to my surface tab and select a component, for example, this one that I have here. Okay, so this is how a component looks like, and as you can see, it's different from a parameter because it has a set of inputs on the left side, and then an output, in this case, on the right side, which means that this component will take a set of four points and then create a surface with them. So what I'm gonna do next is to create those four point parameters. And I can do this by simply copying this one. So I'm just gonna type Ctrl C and then Ctrl V to paste several copies of it. And then what I'm gonna do is to connect these four point parameters into the four inputs that I have over here. So what I have to do is to click on this node that we have over here and simply drag it into this node that I have in my component. If you would like to unplug any of these parameters, what you have to do is to place your mouse on top of the output you want to disconnect, then press and hold the control key and you'll notice a red arrow with a negative sign. Then you just have to right click and drag the connection backwards. So this will remove the connection. So if you remember from my previous explanation about the color system, all my parameters and component are in orange. And this is because they don't have any information referenced into them. So what I'm gonna do now is to reference these parameters into some points and you'll notice how they change their color. So I'm gonna go ahead to my toolbar and select my point command and place some points into my viewport.
And then to reference these geometries into my grasshopper definition, what I have to do is to right click in my parameter and then go to this option that says set one point and then simply select one of my four points. So now as you can see, this parameter has changed its color to gray, which means that now it has a point referenced into it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the same for the rest of my points. Okay, so there you go. Now as you can see, a new surface has been created now that we have our four points connected to the inputs of this component. So by now you may have realized the way in which Grasshopper works, where you start creating some relationship on your Grasshopper canvas and then you start previewing them on your Rhino viewport. So one of the main aspects of this software is that any change I make to my references geometries will inform my definition in real time and automatically update it. So for example, if I move this point, my surface automatically updates according to the new position of it. Okay, so now if I click on my surface component, you'll notice that it will turn in a green color. And the same thing will happen to the surface in my viewport. So this is a useful feature in which you can track down which geometry corresponds to which parameter or component in your definition. So for example, if I click on my point parameters, you'll see how those points are also being displayed in a green color. Okay, so then to explain the left to right logic, as you can see, I always start my definition from the left side of my canvas. And then as I start to grow my definition, I will always go to the right. So for example, if I would like to divide this surface in points, I could call, for example, a device surface component. Mm -hmm, so it would be this guy over here. And then this component will ask me for a surface to divide. So I would just plug the surface that I have here. And then by default, it creates a grid that goes 10 points by 10 points. So now we can see these points displayed on our viewport. Okay, so now let's say that I would like to move these points upwards in a C vector. What I would do is to call a move component. And I will put it to the right side of my divide surface component. So as you can see, this component is orange, as it doesn't have any information referenced into it. So the first thing it's asking me is for the geometries that I want to move. So I'm going to connect it to the points that I've just created. And then it is asking me for a vector. So in this case, I'm going to call a C vector, as that is the direction I want to move my points. And here I could just add a slider to control the distance in which I want to move my points. So if I double click on my slider, a pop-up window will appear where I can set up my minimum and maximum values. So here I'm just going to set this one to 9 and then I'm just going to press OK. And then I'm going to simply plug it into my vector. So now as you can see, we can control dynamically the distance in which uh, our points are moving. So the next thing I could do is to create a set of lines that go from the first group of points that I had and then to the second ones that I have just created. So what I would do here is to call a line component. And then as you can see, this component will ask me for two sets of points, which would be the start points and end points of my lines. So I would plug in my start points to the first surface points that I created. And then I would plug my end points to the set of points that I have just moved. So now as you can see, a new set of lines has been created. So in a general way, this is how you start working in Grasshopper. You start from a very simple set of parameters and then you start associating components to start pulling up geometries. And as you can see here, this always happens from a left to right logic. So what I'm gonna do here to show you what happens when you do something wrong in Grasshopper is to connect this point input into into my surface just so you can see what happens here. So now as you can see my component turned red and what this means is that this component has been fed with a type of data which doesn't correspond. So whenever you have something wrong in your definition a component like this will appear.
And there are several reasons why this may happen, but this seems to be always one of the more recurrent ones. Okay, so now let's say that I would like to hide this surface as I don't need to see it anymore. What I could do here is to click on my surface component and then hit my spacebar. And as you can see, a new pop-up menu will appear. And as you can see, this menu has a lot of options, but for example, if we focus on these two little heads that we have here, what I can do here is to enable or disable the preview of my geometries. So for example, if I disable it, you'll notice that my surface will disappear from my viewport. And this is very useful because as you go on your definition, you may want to start hiding up certain geometries so things don't become too crowded or confusing. So in this case, if you want to bring back your surface, you have to simply hit again the spacebar and select the Enable Preview icon. And then another thing you could do is to disable the component. And you'll notice as soon as I do this, all these components will turn orange as my surface component will stop transmitting information. So I'm going to hit again my spacebar and then I'm going to click on this disable icon and you'll notice that my component turns in a different gray and these two components become orange as they have stopped receiving information from my surface component. So if I want to enable it again, I simply hit again my spacebar and select my enable icon and you'll notice my definition starts working again. Okay, so finally, if you would like to transform this surface into an actual Rhino geometry you can edit, what you could do is something called baking, which is when you convert your Grasshopper visualization into actual Rhino geometry. So to do this, just simply hit again your spacebar and this time select this icon that says bake. And then if I hide my preview surface component and go to my shaded view, You'll notice that now we have a Rhino surface which we can use to edit it or treat it like any other normal Rhino surface. And just to wrap things up, our last thing would be how do you actually save your Grasshopper definitions? So the thing you want to understand here is that Grasshopper saves its own files independent from the ones you create on Rhino. And the way in which we do this is by simply going to our file tab over here and then select my save document option. So then a pop-up window will appear here. So now I'm just going to go to my desktop and look for my exercise zero one folder that I've just created here. And then I'm just going to simply name my definition with whatever name I want. So I'm just going to call it exercise one. And as you can see, our grasshopper files will have the extension .gh. So now as we can see here on our top bar, our definition has already the name we used to save it. So one thing I will recommend you for each definition is to always create a Rhino file with the set of initial parameters you have already referenced it. So whenever you go back at it, you always have a good starting point. So what I'm going to do here is to also save my Rhino file into the same folder. So I'm going to go to my file tab and then save as, select my exercise zero one folder, and I will save it with the exact same name. So that's it, now I have a Rhino file and a Grasshopper definition created with the same name. So whenever I go back to this definition, I can always start working wherever I left my project. Okay, so I think that will be all for this video. And in the next one, we're gonna start seeing some concepts of uh, what is data matching and lists, which is the way in which Grasshopper organizes information. So thanks a lot for watching and see you on the next one.